So I think that I mean, that's one of the big issues for me because I want to see New Hampshire on the map again for for booming businesses. I could see that that uh, I want to think of Manchester as as a tech center, and I think that some companies are, are trying to establish establish Manchester is just that. Why are all these tech companies going to to Massachusetts? If New Hampshire had a favorable business climate, it would be a great place um, for the for these companies to move. So that's that's a big issue for me. And then also just the bureaucratic red tape and the government trying to tell business owners how to do business. I think that is is completely backward. And if Democrats want to talk about job creation, I we know is is you know, the, the, the socialist uh, leading ones, which is now, uh, unfortunately, a, a good deal of the base in the Republic, or I mean, the, in the Democratic Party now, um, they think that government creates jobs. Well, no, actually, it's these business owners, and if they're putting these burdens on business owners, then they can't create new jobs. So that's, that's a, a big issue for me. And, um, you know, if you... Uh, have any other questions with those issues? But I'd say that that, that to me is is number one, and I don't want to sit there idly and, and see taxes get raised on businesses in New Hampshire and have the situation get even worse. Emily, this is Skip again. Um, you said something that that really came up in the news again. It first started with Elizabeth Warren with "You didn't build that," and now Hillary Clinton this past week also saying that businesses and corporations don't create jobs. As a female business owner, this must have driven you absolutely bonkers. Oh, absolutely. I, I, that, that sickens me, as I was saying, that feminism, which has been, you know, taken over by Democrats, and, and they want to talk about female empowerment. I, I, struggling to find uh, how they how they can rationalize saying that that corporations or business owners don't don't provide jobs and that somehow female empowerment is is you know trying to make a, a, a buck off the government and and you know being on all these these assistance programs that's not empowerment and you know again Democrats have gotten more and more radical it used to be oh well these programs are are just a a stepping stone, and now it is, you know, what they're what they're saying is that it, this is uh, a foundation for a lot of people's lives, and that idea that you you need government. That's what the, the message they're trying to, to to give is: you need government for your well being, um, for for having a job. Which you know, some people can can argue, okay, for for um, infrastructure and for defense. I believe that defense is a, a core function of government. But not creating jobs, this is, this is a ridiculous notion. And I, I think that they, they want to punish people, and they're, they're working on, on having a servant class. And people are unfortunately buying into that. And, again, that is not empowerment. If you're in that position where you feel that you need to depend on, on government to, to give you everything, uh, you know, I, I, I actually wrote an article a few years back because the Life of Julia campaign that Obama launched years ago, uh, that that disturbed me because the, the Life of Julia campaign shows this woman from from cradle to grave depending on government for her well-being. And it's funny how, again, feminism is, a, is supposed to be about bringing women up. And I want to see more women in politics and in business, and it, it seems that they want to see fewer women in, in these fields, and, uh, you know, what's the difference between financially depending on a, a man for your well-being or depending on the government? Ah. So they want to fight, they want to fight one, um, but then say that, that the other is okay. Well, see, yeah, I, and, and it, especially when, when another woman says it, and I, I'm, I sit there thinking, really, because my my hope is to is to create jobs through my business, and they're they're trying to say that nope, we we want the servant class who has to depend on government for for everything. You know, you hit it 
the nail right on the head. All they did was take the old Social Security mantra of you will be independent of your family. You will not be a burden. And I had this argument with my parents all the time in that you're tr you don't want to be a burden on Ricky and I, but yet you are a burden on everybody else through the government payments. You are directly dependent on government for this stuff. And I could never seem to get it through their heads that the money they paid in for Social Security and all that other stuff was money that other people were paying for them then because you your money went to pay for somebody before you during that time. And all the Obama administration did was to take that same tired old wrong meme and apply it to a politically favored class of people that they needed to win elections. That you're not, you don't need a husband, you have daddy government. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little snarky today. That's okay, you know. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're just switching where the, the money comes from. But at least, you know, if, if a woman is, is, you know, depending on, on someone, um, it, you know, who is in, uh, let's just say, depending on a friend or a family or a community, you know, for, for assistance, that's by their own free will. Whereas the government, obviously, the taxpayer is getting forced to fund things. And, you know, I'll, I'll say it again and again, if you had to choose between being dependent on some entity for your well-being or being dependent on yourself and having and being an entrepreneur and having your own business and, and giving back to the community, that's the position you want to be in. To me, that is what everyone should, should strive for. And, you know, I, and I did on a personal note, uh, I, I know what that's like to, to first get going with, with a business. And sure, I've, I've, I've struggled, I've had successes, and it's, it's certainly a, a journey. And I'm not going to get discouraged and feel that I need to be kept down. And I think about if people were to write down some of their heroes, or if I think about some of my, my heroes in business, they weren't, they weren't depending on, on a government for their, for their well-being. So why, why should I? Or why, why should anyone do that? That's not how you get successful. So it, 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 for this to be a permanent fixture in our, in our lives, I, I, I hate that that is the selling point for, for Democrats now. It, it just seems completely hopeless. And I think that Republicans can, can offer that kind of hope. Hey, if we were to cut taxes and drive more business to New Hampshire, more jobs would be created. Why, why are companies leaving? Well, if you raise taxes on them, you're raising taxes on the people who are actually going to provide jobs. Why would you do that? Of course, there, there's, there's going to be uh, less of an incentive for them to, to want to operate in New Hampshire. You know, there's uh, um, I get email from you know Democrat campaigns and, and the Democrat Congressional Committee, and uh, one of the email names that they use is Julia at dccc.org. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, I got to read that. <laughs> That's going to be fascinating. All right, so you get elected, you go to the New Hampshire House. Do uh, you have any thought about committee assignments or your priorities when you get there, other than what we've been talking about? You know, I I am not sure just yet. I heard from from some folks. They said, you know what, you would be great on judiciary, and some others said, oh, you'd be great on budget. Um, I do have to keep in mind that with a committee assignment, that I having a, a business, um, I'd have to think about some of those those time commitments. But that's a great thing about working for yourself and and being flexible with your with your schedule. So um, I I'd have to give some thought to that if, if I were elected. But it would it would truly be an honor, and I'm going to remain involved in and be the voice for that that kind of empowerment in for for small business owners, for entrepreneurs, for people who want to succeed and and try to, you know, talk talk with people about that possibility. So again, I, I hope I do make it. Um, but if not, I'm I'm gonna make sure that I, I, I stay involved. So how do people uh, get in touch with you? So my, I can give my cell phone number and then also also my, my email. Uh, cell is 
and my email is Emily for the number four state rep at gmail dot com. All right, well, Emily. and then there's also an about me page. Oh, good. Keep going. <laughs> sure. So it's, it's about dot me and forward slash Emily O'Neill. Okay, we'll try to look those up and include them with your segment um, when we put your podcast up, which will be, I'm going to have to hustle because i got to get these up before the actual election because yep, otherwise there's probably not a lot of point to posting them Wednesday or Thursday. doesn't do us a lot of good. Uh, Emily, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been a pleasure. All right, you have a great day. You too. All right, thank you. you all right, that was Emily O'Neill. She's running as a write-in candidate in Bedford, New Hampshire. Uh, for those of you in the party who are familiar with Bill Grenier, um, she is his bane, so you should go vote for her. <laughs> yes. he doesn't support her. No, I mean, and she's absolutely right where the Republican Party is going more to the middle under the misguided idea that we can throw away our present base and get a new base. <laughs> a um, new base that votes for Democrat. Yeah, yeah, although this year may be different, but we'll find out. Well, they might just not vote. Maybe. And, you know, maybe. But, maybe. you know, there's a lot of people in their concerted, in their conservative base that aren't going to vote either. That's true. I keep getting the emails and the phone calls because the NHGOP party has basically said, go away. We don't want you. So let's see how that division is going to work. Yeah, they work. want your money, though. Uh, but they've also been complaining they're not getting it. I know. There's a reason for that. And I think with that post that I put up about the smaller groups, people have learned that through the Internet, we can give directly to those people who actually support our beliefs and not give it to a general group that's then going to say, well, then let's let the elites decide where the money is going to go, which is what the New Hampshire Senate Republican Majority PAC has done. See how all this stuff gets linked together. Yeah, well, we've, we've said that for a long time. You have the ability to donate to the candidates and groups that support the issues that you're in favor of, and you should do that. Uh, you, there's no reason for you to go through the party apparatus. They're just going to waste your money on dopey stuff. And uh, if you give it to the candidate, at least you know the candidate's going to do something. And then when the candidate you voted for and donated to changes their tune, you can go, I was a donor. You just, look what you just did, you know? Yes, you uh, want no more money for you. No more money for you. I'm going to be the donor Nazi. Yeah, and uh, you can give the money to us. Go to granitegrock.com, click the donate button, help keep the show on the air. Thank you very, very much, Darlene, for coming in. She's still with us and listening. This is Grok Talk. We will be back next week with more news information you could only get from us. Yeah, isn't that just a good... Yeah, I'm coming back. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah, baby! When asked whether she still supports Obamacare, Senator Jean Shaheen said, Yes, I do continue to support the law. We're beginning to see some positive results. How can Senator Shaheen say we're seeing positive results when 22,000 of our neighbors have already lost their health insurance? What's worse, the Boston Globe reports the state's only health insurance provider radically reduced the number of hospitals in their network, forcing some people to drive over an hour for lab work, even when there's a hospital within a few miles of their home. When pressed about lack of access, Shaheen said... There are some hospitals that are not covered, unfortunately, and um, I I certainly hope that's going to change. Jean Shaheen promised us we could keep our doctors and our health care coverage. Now she hopes we can get to a local hospital? Call Senator Shaheen at 603-647-7500. Tell her we need more than hope. We need leadership. Paid for by Citizens for a Strong New Hampshire. Senator Jean Shaheen said, if you like your current health plan, you can keep it. That's not true, Senator. 22,000 New Hampshire citizens have been kicked off their insurance plans. Hospitals in Rochester, Concord, and Portsmouth, they aren't allowed to provide care under the exchange. Senator, you were wrong in your comments. You should apologize for your misleading remarks. I'm calling Senator Shaheen at 750-3004 and telling her I want my doctor back. You should, too. Paid for by SaberPack.org. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate committee. All of the music on this program comes to us through Creative Commons licensing from Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the speakers, not necessarily those of CNHT, GraniteRock.com, or anyone else for that matter. Rock Talk.